think Biden winning the White House and the Congress split between the Republicans and Democrats remain generally positive for the macro and investment outlook for emerging Asia. The dollar would still face a structural downturn in our view, and this together with an ultra-low US dollar interest rates is positive for Asia macro for a few reasons. Number one, positive real yield offered in Asia is attractive to international bond inflows. Number two, stronger Asian currencies could help improve the region's balance of payment position by attracting capital inflows and reducing foreign debt burden. And this would be particularly beneficial to economies like Indonesia, India, and the Philippines. Number three, EM Asia's growth is expected to outperform the US during time of dollar weakness as the world economy gradually steps out of COVID-19 impact and global trade recovers from its current state. We are positive on EM Asian equities as we think they tend to outperform developed markets equities during time of dollar weakness. The faster recovery for Asia vis-a-vis -vis the developed economies from COVID-19 impact shall help improve the macro fundamentals of the region. We are also positive on EM Asian credits as we think credit spreads are expected to tighten during period of weak dollar and improving growth fundamentals. We are also positive on gold as a hedge against the debasing of fiat currency. Majority of US voters are in support of an expanded unemployment compensation. This promise to think that the Democrats and Republicans will still come together to launch a false stimulus package, though the timing and amount of the package will face high uncertainty as a split Congress would put restraint on the scale of future US fiscal spending. Since the Republicans, who are more fiscally conservative, are still expected to have a say on US government finances through the Senate, the proposed spending by the Biden administration on New Green Deal, infrastructure investment, and other programs that worth around $7 trillion in total are likely to be compromised. By the same time, the Democrats' proposal to raise corporate and high-income individual taxes could also be shelved. On a net basis, we think the size of future U.S. fiscal deficit are likely to narrow by about 0.9% of GDP annually over a 10-year period when compared to a blue sweep scenario. This would reduce the support for economic recovery in the U.S but put less strain on the twin deficit problem. We think the dollar would still face a structural downturn due to the following factors. Number one, the twin deficit problem. With more fiscal resources like the get channel to the economy through business and unemployment supports, we expect both the US fiscal and current account deficits to remain wide in future years. Number two, excessive monetary expansion. The aggressive government bond purchases done by the Fed and the banking sector have essentially created money out of thin air and is likely to aggravate in the coming years. Number three, the Fed falling behind the inflation curve. The pursuit of new in average inflation targeted framework means the Fed will let inflation runs higher than its previous targeted level. If inflationary pressure does emerge in the future and the Fed refrains from tightening shiftly as said, Real policy rate will be driven lower, eroding the value of the US dollar and its appeal to investors. We think the Biden presidency is positive for US-China trade and bilateral relations on the service. The strategic competition between the US and China is not likely to alter much under the upcoming Biden administration as the more hawkish stance taken by the US on China receives bipartisan support. What may change, however, is that US policy towards China may become more, quote, multilateral, strategic, and coordinated, end quote, under Biden, as opposed to being, quote, unilateral, erratic, and disorganized, end quote, as were seen under Trump. On trade, we think Biden will take a much more multilateral approach to unite its allies in Europe and East Asia to target China. The World Trade Organization would likely be designated as the forum for trade negotiations again, as opposed to Trump's unilateral approach of using tariffs and executive orders as his primary means. The new approach by Biden shall help put global and US-China trade back onto a less disruptive course, while rejuvenating the role of a multilateral rule-based trade system.
Allianz Global Investors.